Hello and welcome to the Heal Yourself with me, Sarah Dawkins podcast. We share people who've already healed themselves, along with health and wellness tips from myself. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Heal Yourself. My guest today is Esty, who is a South African 50-year-old holistic health coach who's lived an active life. From her teens to her late 30s, she battled disordered eating and other health challenges. The realisation that her health was deteriorating prompted her to embark on a journey towards holistic wellness. Esty is now a certified life coach focusing on helping middle-aged individuals live a fulfilling life. Her personal journey marked by her experience with eating disorders, PCOS, fertility treatments and emotional abuse equips her with empathy and a deep understanding of her clients, helping them to make better choices, sustainable habits and improve their overall well-being. So welcome, Esty. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. You've been through so much. Would you like to share with our listeners what you've healed and how you've healed it? Yes, sure. Um, I'll start at the beginning. I'd say I was a very active teenager, very happy household. My parents didn't have problems that I was aware of. And still somehow, I, I think some of us are just perfectionists in we we're born that way. So it started with body image problems. In in those days, the really slim girls were were fashionable. They had like thin stick-like arms and legs. And here I was an athlete. I was training five hours a day. I walked around with my thunder thighs and my six pack. And <laughs> And everyone always said, no, you, you, you're not fat. You're just, you know, really bulky. And I wasn't bulky, but to me, that made a lasting impression. And I can remember one day we were um, at athletics training and we were doing high jump. And my athletics trainer had uh, purchased a video camera. And she had her husband on the sidelines. He was recording everything. And that Friday afternoon, we all had to go to her house, the whole high jump team. And we sat in her lounge and she played all the recordings and she went through our technique. And when it was my turn, she and I did my thing on video and she said, if only your bum wasn't so big, you would have jumped higher. (laughs) And that was really... The start. I was 12 years old, and that was the start of this this thing in my head. And it's amazing how we look at ourselves in the mirror and we don't see the real picture. We don't see what other people see. We see what our mind tells us to see. So basically, I starved myself. I didn't eat. I lied to my mother about eating. And um, over weekends, I would binge and purge. And that went on throughout my teen years. I actively destroyed my athletics career <laughs> by not eating. And But looking a certain way was more important than achieving my athletic goals. So I was diagnosed with PCOS in my early 20s. With that came insulin resistance. And with that, the weight started creeping up, even though I was eating healthy. Well, I thought I was eating healthy. And um, I was training six days a week. And it just started compounding. I had to have fertility treatment. And I conceived twin daughters. And now you have little children in the house. So binging and purging was really my thing. That was what I was really good at. But now with little children in the house, you don't have the opportunity that you used to have. So you you can binge behind the scenes when they are sleeping, but 
getting rid of it is starting to be a problem because there's always a little one looking for in, for attention and I started just a ballooning. And it was really in my late 30s that I was just, I was just tired of being tired. I was always tired. I had migraines on a very regular basis. I had extreme bowel discomfort. I really had digestive issues that I was struggling with. I was insulin resistant. Like I said, I was tired all the time. I was moody all the time. And my immune system just started suffering from the fact that I was really, it was malnutrition. And it just caused, I had flu every second week. And I just came to the point where I realized that I'm a mother of two little children. And if I can't show up for myself, there's no way I'm going to show up for these kids. And I obviously was not showing up for my husband either. So it was really making that decision to make a change. And I realized that making the change is going to depend on me. I can't go to the doctor and he can't give me a pill or a juice or inject me with anything that's just going to solve all my problems. There has to be a different way because I was, I had like a basket full of medication that I was taking because every time they prescribe something, it has some side effect and they prescribe something else to counter the side effect and it's just a never ending cycle. And I looked at this basket and I thought, why am I doing this? If I'm doing this at 37, 38, what's my life going to look like at 67 or 68? What's my quality of life going to look like? And I just decided that something has to change. And so it was not many weeks later, um, our medical aide had like a, a medical assessment that you could go and do at the gym. And I went to the gym and booked for my medical assessment and I got on the scale. And when I got on the scale, I weighed 10 kilograms more than I expected to weigh. That was how I'd been lying to myself. It was, and it just totally blew me away. It just, I was dumbfounded. And I drove home and I thought, yeah, but it's in the middle of the day and I was wearing all my clothes and I've already had like two liters of water and I've already had two meals. And a voice just said, who are you kidding? That's not, you haven't eaten 10 kilos of food <laughs> in this day so far. This is totally up to you. And I just went home and I started researching and I researched, I read every article I could on diet and healthy weight loss and it just the pennies dropped that everyone is talking about the same kinds of foods and the same kind of lifestyle habits and I really started focusing on nutrition I did my first nutrition certification just for myself just to help myself and things started changing. Uh, without me realizing, I started eating mostly anti-inflammatory foods. I increased my protein intake. I really increased my fiber intake and that made such a huge difference. And things just started changing. And I, I didn't really lose weight on the scale. I lost probably three kilos and then it just evened out and I just stopped there. But I wasn't tired anymore. I hardly ever had migraines anymore. Uh, things just, something shifted and the medications I started leaving and they just all left the basket and never returned. And when I was 42, I started doing CrossFit and I started building muscle. I loved CrossFit. I absolutely 
loved throwing around those heavy weights <laughs> and climbing up the ropes and my whole body transformed. It was for the first six months, I didn't lose any weight, but I built an insane amount of muscle. And I'm, I'm convinced it's the PCOS, the fact that we have higher androgen levels. I really built an amount of muscle mass that was not normal compared to the other women. And everything changed. It was, it felt like one month and all of a sudden I lost like eight kilograms. It just started peeling off my body and I totally transformed. And it took me about nine months to wean myself off the androgen suppressants that I was drinking for the PCOS. And that was the last of the medications I was taking. And when I threw that away, that was the end of it. And during my journey, I discovered that I was actually gluten intolerant. So the moment I started eliminating the gluten from my system, all the problems I had left over, the, the gut issues, the digestive issues, the constant headaches, everything just disappeared. And there I was at the age of, well, in my mid-40s, and I've never looked as good as I, as, as I look, and I've never been as healthy as I was. I've I haven't in eight years even had the flu. And it's just, just, I have to say, lifestyle. Lifestyle changes, changing your lifestyle and largely changing your mindset as well. Because what was very important for me was to develop a healthy relationship with food. And that happened by becoming aware. Aware of the foods I eat and the effect those foods have on my body. How I feel while I'm eating those foods how I feel after eating those foods. And that enabled me to set an intention. I could sit down and say, what is my intention with this meal? Do I want to recover from a stressful situation I was in, like an injury or surgery or an illness? Or do I want to enhance my sporting performance? Do I want to just put a lot of nutrients into my body so that I know that my, my longevity is going to be good, that my life quality is going to be good. And being able to set that intention and being aware of the food that I eat and having a purpose for the food, saying that I know this is a weekend. I always used to tease and uh, my clients and say I don't I, I track my food for me personally food tracking macro tracking and calorie tracking made a huge difference but I have to say that I was not diagnosed with an eating disorder I won't recommend any coach saying to someone who has been diagnosed with eating disorders, start tracking your calories, because someone like that has to work with a professional. And mental health is so important. It's not, it's not one person, a nutrition coach saying, okay, we take your nutrition. There's a lot of other aspects that are involved. But disordered eating, that, that, consists of everything from nighttime eating and binge eating and excluding food all of that is disordered it's it's unnatural and it's unhealthy and that makes it a disordered kind of eating and for that for myself personally calorie tracking really helped from an educational point of view Hey, sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to drop in and say thank you so much for listening to the podcast. And this isn't the only way I help people. I also have a book and a course called Heal Yourself, and I do one-to-one -one client coaching. Periodically, I run workshops and do some public speaking too. All these details are on my website, sarahdawkins.com. So with that, let's get back to this great episode. Because now I could see 
These foods are higher in calories. These foods have basically no nutrients, although they are extremely high in calories. These foods are really high in nutrients. Wow, I didn't know this. So it helped me to plan my day, which made it a lot easier because then it wasn't that mindless snacking and now I'm anxious and in a hurry and I just pop open the fridge and I grab the first thing on my way out. I could set an intention and say, I want to increase my protein intake. And through my calorie tracker, I could see these are the foods, they fit into my calorie target. And it was so educational for me. I, I haven't tracked my calories in quite a while. I think you... For educational purposes, it's wonderful. But later on, we start eating intuitively. And we now have the knowledge to know that this is what this food is going to do for me. But I always used to joke and say, I don't track my calories over weekends because I don't need to see the damage in black and white. I don't have cheat meals. I have recovery meals. So because I did CrossFit six days a week, my intention for my weekend meals, I didn't care how many calories I ate. But it was important for me that the food I ate would contain a lot of nutrients and aid in my recovery so that I'm ready for the next week. And that totally changed my mindset about how I view food. I used to punish myself with food. And I used to reward myself with food and all of that stopped. I still get periods where I would binge, but I don't feel guilty about it. Because I know one day of sitting down and just saying, oh, what the heck, I'm going <laughs> for gold today. That's not going to damage me in any way. So for myself personally, I like implementing the 80-20% rule. So I will eat. 80% non-processed foods and then just leave that 20% over for more processed kinds of food because I do feel it has to be sustainable. You can't feel like you are always on a diet. <laughs> and unfortunately, in today's world, it, eating healthy is viewed as a diet. Everyone is always asking, are you on a diet? And you're like, no, I'm just eating my normal kinds of food. And what's really sad for me nowadays is the fact that there are so many industries out there that are marketing for the, and they're benefiting through making us feel uncomfortable in our bodies. And they are benefiting by creating a kind of fear around normal foods normal foods that we would eat and people are afraid of eating healthy foods because of what they are hearing on social media from people who are influencers with hundreds of thousands of fans and they don't realize that these people are like fear mongering because they want to promote a supplement or another product that they are using and it's it's something I wish we could address somehow, and I can't see us doing it in any other way as educating people about just healthy foods. I spoke to someone over the weekend and she said, oh, no, but it's unaffordable to eat healthy because you have to buy this organic stuff. And, and I said, okay, but what are you eating instead of the organic stuff? You're eating processed foods. Doesn't it make sense to just not eat organic stuff, but eat fruit and vegetables and then you're getting in unprocessed foods that are at least healthy? So what if they don't contain the amount of nutrients or they might have a pesticide on them that you can wash off? It's still unprocessed and it doesn't cause the inflammation that the processed foods do. But people are focusing on the wrong things because they are afraid of doing the right thing, not realizing that dosage really matters. And there are chemical compounds in every single food on earth, but 
the amount that you have to eat to consume enough of those chemicals to to develop some kind of toxicity is absolutely impossible for one person to do in one sitting. But there's, especially in South Africa, I find there's not education about nutrition. People are totally uneducated, unaware, and it's becoming a really big health issue. And I see people eating in disordered fashion every single day. I work with women who have um, hormonal challenges who are perimenopausal and postmenopausal. And I don't know if it's from the era that we were born in or if it's just in an effort to try and make a change to the suffering that they are experiencing, but they are too afraid to eat food. They just afraid you say increase this eat oh no i can't eat oats and i can't eat this and i can't eat white rice and it's i think that at this stage is my biggest struggle is getting women out of that disordered eating mindset i have to restrict myself of everything and then i end up binge eating so Yes, for myself, healing from the disordered eating was mostly a mindset thing. Was was realizing that food is there to benefit me and it's not there to harm me. And in the process, I healed from the PCOS. And I can honestly say I'm postmenopausal today and I have... Little to none symptoms. <laughs> so no, very, very happy with my my state, the place where I am in at the moment. And yes, I think my and mission is to bring it about in every other woman my path crosses. And you look amazing, Esty. Thank you very you much. Really do. I have so many questions. So um, first of all, I think absolutely there's so much information and misinformation about. Um, food being demonized um, and other foods being promoted that aren't healthy and and we are we are challenged by what is out there that people are reading and watching that they believe is healthy and yet is truly unhealthy um, and we only have to look at the eat well plate that is full of grains um, and carbohydrates to, to know that, you know, we've been promoted a, a suboptimal way of eating. Yes. So it is, it's a mindset and it's about unlearning a lot of uh, programming to mm -hmm. relearn where our nutrition is. Um, and for the benefit of the listeners, could you elaborate on what CrossFit is? Hmm. Well, CrossFit is... Uh multidisciplinary sport I would say it consists of cardio it 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 does have running but it also depends on who programs your your CrossFit workout some CrossFit boxes don't do a lot of running but it's running it's jumping rope box jumps rowing so there's cardio involved in every CrossFit class then there's weightlifting which would be mostly with Dumbbells, kettlebells, or barbells. Um, so a lot of strength work that obviously um, contributes to gaining the muscle mass. And then there's gymnastics in there, which was the challenging part for me. <laughs> it's, it's amazing if... As children, we walk around on our hands on the lawn. And now when you're 45 year old and someone tells you to flip upside down and walk on your hands, you're like, no, that's not happening. <laughs> but yes, a lot of gymnastics, handstands, walking on your hands, rope climbs, pull-ups, um, bar muscle ups. And it's all fantastic for your mobility. I remember when I started, I was amazed at how stiff my joints were. It just the, the shoulder mobility and the knee mobility and the wrists, the, the people who start doing CrossFit, most of them complain about 
their risks being so sore for the first month. And you actually think, what is your mobility in your wrist? How, how far do you move your wrists in a normal working day or your knees for that matter? So a lot of mobility involved, which is absolutely fantastic for joint health, for your movement. It's a very good sport. I would say there's, there's a lot of... Mm, Different opinions about CrossFit, but I want to say if you have a proper CrossFit coach, and I felt because I was older when I started, you know, you, you don't heal as fast if you break something. <laughs> so I was very careful, and I started off and I did lifting classes, weightlifting classes on the side, just to improve my technique and so that I can feel comfortable in loading a lot of weight on the bar because I know that my technique is in the right place. I want to say that CrossFit doesn't cause injuries. It's bad technique that causes the injuries. But yes, there's some controversy about CrossFit, but I have to say overall, and you don't need to do the Oryx movements. There are scaled movements, so many scaled versions for every movement that this is a sport that anyone from the beginner to the more advanced person can do. And it's it's a fun sport because it always challenges you in some way. It's not like doing a spinning class five days a week and every day is the same. Even if you are really good at the endurance side or the gymnastic side, there's something that's going to challenge you because we are not all excellent athletes across all the different disciplines. So it's pushing your, you, yourself a bit. You are out of your comfort zone always. And what it did for me was my mindset totally changed because I was always Miss Perfect. Everything was, and I was that child when I learned to ride a bike, I would take it around the back of the house where no one can see me and practice until I could do it because I didn't want to do it in front of other people so that they can see, okay, that I'm failing. And now suddenly you, you are in a CrossFit box and you have to do things that are mentally challenging and there's a lot of other people around you. And I learned there that all those people are there to support you. No one looks at you and says, oh, look, that woman can't even do it because everyone started there. And I really learned there that you are never criticized by people who are doing more than you. You are always criticized by the people doing less than you because the people doing more than you started where you were and they know it. So they really... It's a community, no matter where I've been, I've been to a number of different CrossFit boxes and they all have the same kind of community. They all support and encourage each other and it really boosted my confidence. I was married to an alcoholic and he was quite the emotional abuser. So when I started with CrossFit, I was very shy and... I was very uncertain of myself. My confidence was really, really bad. And I, I transformed in six months' time. I just totally came out of my shell and rediscovered myself. <laughs> so, yes, I think it's a – I would always recommend CrossFit because – that is the place where I think my biggest transformation took place. And it sounds that part of the CrossFit was was the exercise and the um, what you're doing to your body, transforming your body, but also part of it was that community, being yes. with people with the same intention to get fit, to change their body shape, to maybe improve their health, improve their longevity. So everybody's got the a very similar or the same aim to move forward in their lives and that that community that social support is so healthy and so mm. needed no it's definitely a very open-minded community they are all open very eager to grow and to develop themselves and it's it's nice to be in a community like that and Yes, I just, I think there's, and the 
support that you have, not just in the CrossFit box, but when things start going wrong in your life, those are your friends. And I started, this is, I started coaching actually during COVID because um, our CrossFit box was closed during the lockdown and we were about five or six weeks in when a friend called me and she said, oh, you've got to help me. She said, I've like, I've gained five kilos already. I can't stop eating. <laughs> what do I do? And and I helped her and it just went from there. So I originally started coaching CrossFitters, not, not professional CrossFitters at professional level, but the average weekend warrior person. I helped with weight management, with body transformation, with nutritional habits around exercise and around recovery because we we like training, we get so enthusiastic about training and then we overtrain and we forget about recovery. And yeah, recovery is so important as well yes. as for our bodies to heal and rest. And what people don't realize is that recovery is not just taking a day off. Your nutrition is going to play a impactful part in your recovery. Keep having your your nutrition in a good place means that you sleep well, you rest well, you heal well, you are just you set up for optimal performance. So coaching the CrossFitters was where I started, was with coaching my friends. And yes, it just it just went from there. So I I want to say they they really changed my life because <laughs> because of them I became a coach. Yes. I just realized that if I could help myself, then there's no reason I can't give back and help everyone else who wants help. So wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Esty. And you've shared such a lot of information. Thank you. But could you share one tip that somebody going through disordered eating or PCOS could do to help themselves on their own journey? Like I say, mindfulness for me is so important. Just consciousness. Becoming conscious of your surroundings and of what you put into your body. Not just nutrition-wise and what we are drinking, but the content we consume, the people we surround ourselves with. Becoming conscious of what's going on in your head and the thoughts that pop up and just if it's a negative thought if you're talking yourself down being aware enough to be able to catch that thought and to replace it with something else and I think for myself that started with practicing gratitude just waking up in the morning and the first thing I do, I'm my eyes are still closed. No matter what I feel, I smile. Because the moment I smile, I just feel better. And then I think of three things that makes me grateful for waking up this morning. And tonight when I go and I get in bed, I fall asleep with a smile. Because that is the same way I wake up. And thinking of things that you are grateful for makes you aware of the things that are going on around you. And knowing that tonight or tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up and say out loud three things that I am grateful for sets me up during the day to be conscious throughout the whole day and to absorb all these things that come into my life that bring me happiness that I'm grateful for. So immediately you're conscious. You, the moment you start slipping away and you start getting inside your head, something happens and you think, oh, I'm so grateful for this. This has to go on my list. <laughs> and yes, like I said, around the eating is becoming conscious of why I'm eating this and how I'm feeling when I'm eating this and how my body is feeling afterwards. So I think for me, everything and a great deal of my coaching 
comes down to creating awareness in my clients, just about all aspects of their life, because it's so much more than just movement and nutrition. I love that. Thank you. And where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Facebook. It's Esty Bell and on LinkedIn as well. On Instagram, I am level up underscore nutrition underscore coach. And I have a Facebook page as well, which is level up nutrition coach. And that's basically it. You can send me an email. My email address is mycoach at levelupnutrition.co.za and my website is www.levelupnutrition.co.za. Wonderful. Thank you for all you've shared, for being a guest on my podcast and for being who you are. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. This was great. I'm super happy for it being here today thank you for listening please share this podcast with anyone who you think will benefit and can you leave me a review wherever you've listened to it to help me reach more people thank you